Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fabulous to have you here because today is part five of making Gendry's Warhammer from Game of Thrones. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yesterday, of course, you saw us make these stag heads, which was very exciting, of course. And today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna work on assembling all this stuff together. We need to start working on a handle. We need to start really, really thinking about that. And, uh, and, and this is just going to be so much fun. So it's great having you here. First things first, I forgot to mention, it's TIG welding practice time. More practice required. Let's get to work. Always exciting to get a little bit of practice in, so the next step in this project is indeed going to be the handle. We have this piece of ash here from the battle axe project that we started on ooh, a couple weeks ago or so. One thing about this piece of wood though is it is not necessarily super super wide. I do not have a lot of side to side here which is going to make the process of making this handle rather complex. Now of course you remember I started this project with just those two really blurry images of what this looked like and of course I then told you guys yesterday that I then found these images that were posted on a blog about Game of Thrones after we started and what you can see here is that handle indeed looks like it is a leather wrap. Now you always hear people say that proper preparation prevents poor performance and proper preparation here certainly would have prevented poor performance because it would have meant that I would have uh, got myself some leather and then I some leather working tools and then find out how to work leather and then do a leather wrap. Well not only do I not know how to work leather not only do I not have leather working tools but I don't have any leather. So what is my game plan? Well my game plan is as follows. I planned ahead just about well enough to know that. The handle looked purple. I investigated into getting some purple heart wood in time. Couldn't get any large enough or long enough. So what we have is we have the ash and I have number 12 red mahogany stain, which should work to make the wood brownish. Yellow, um, yellow? I, I, d red, 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 brownish red. So here's my plan. Now it's been bandsaw cut. It's now time to move on to the shaping. So we're going to give shaping this a go here in the leg vise with a draw knife. Now a lot of you guys might know that as a young tiny little, uh, tiny little kid there, I used to do a little bit of woodwork. My father was a hobbyist green woodworker at the time. And so I don't know, as a 12 or 13 year old, I built myself a greenwood chair and was kind of turning greenwood bowls and using draw knives from a very young age. I haven't used a draw knife in quite a number of years, so I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna go, but hey, this, this could be a good way of removing a bulk of the material from this and getting to where it needs to be. I had completely forgotten just how much fun using a draw knife was. This is an incredible tool. The amount of material that you can remove is phenomenal and it is just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable to use. Very, very enjoyable. I, this makes me really miss the, the green woodworking that I did as a kid. This is really good fun. Even though it's dry wood, I can still smell a smell that you can only really smell when you're making shavings, and that is just wonderful. It's, it's so nostalgic. It's a fabulous tool, and I'm really enjoying this. The way that I'm kind of trying to go about this is I'm trying to make a rough octagon, and then I can sight down it and see the highs and see where I need to hit it, and then we'll go to a hexadecagon, and then to a triacontodagon, and then, you know, it'll essentially be round and ready for us to sand this to get the final form, final shape, final evenness. So here we go, this is what I have got 
so far off the draw knife. Pretty good. I've left it as proud as I can while being kind of somewhat round just because I know that I want to have as much room to spare as possible before this thing is finished. And the plan now, so that I have the best tools at my disposability, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run up to my father's wood workshop. I don't know why I didn't think about just starting it there because then we can use actual woodworking tools to do the rest. So we're here at my father's workshop. Oh, what wonderful memories I have in here. Great to be back. And he has a lathe. Um, however, the piece of wood doesn't fit, so we're going to have to cut it down slightly. Okay, now let's see if it fits. Whoa! <laughs> Hey, that worked pretty well. So now what I need to do is I need to generally smooth up the circumference of this piece. Straight off the draw knife there, obviously it's very rough, and we need it to be perfectly round as it goes into the sockets that we have here. And you should note that I do not have a lot of freedom as to how much material I can take off. We're very close to the diameter we need. So because we don't have a lot of material to work with, the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to take this parting tool, and on either end and in the middle, we're going to make a known diameter that is just a hair proud of this. So I will open this up about 0.7 millimeters here, and then we'll start getting our known diameters. You know, one at the end, one in the middle, one at the end. And that should give us something that's nice, clean, and consistent to work to. <coughs> okay, we're all set up, and boy am I excited. I have not used a wood lathe in so long. Here we go. So I'm just inching my way down, just taking off the slightest bit until we're there. Okay, that's close enough for me. That's nice. That gives me a little bit of a little bit of a wiggle room. So now I'm going to do the middle and the end. So I actually ended up doing a whole load more bits. You can see what I'm talking about, about that we are very close with dimension. This is a 45 millimeter board that I cut this out of, and we're wanting a not too far off 45 millimeters. So there are indeed portions of the circumference of this piece where we don't actually have full contact with the roundness, but that is why we left this proud, so that then it can still go down a little more and we can be safe. What I now need to do is I need to take a roughing gouge and one of these things, and we're going to smooth all this off, and we're going to get a nice consistent diameter the whole way across. So I've got a nice, rough, relatively clean diameter, and now we're going to work on how these fittings are going to come together and how this is going to go into the handle. The first thing that I want to do is I want to make this the appropriate diameter, and in this area have an appropriate taper that my collar will come up, and then I'm going to find where the collar fits to. We're going to be able to do some interesting design stuff over on that side of the handle, and we'll then be able to make the taper that will fit inside the eye of the hammer. So first things first, I'm going to work this down until it is the same diameter as the end of that collar. So we'll now give it a check. Okay, it needs to come down a fair ways. So I'll go back in. Okay, beautiful. So now what we'll do is we're going to remove that material and we're going to taper that down into there. Okay, so we've got it now to the point where I have about an eighth of an inch 
until that goes up there, until it presses up there, so that is perfect. This will get epoxied onto here. You can see I've just gently radius that in, and this will create a little bit of an heirloom fit. This is a really nice fit-up technique where you have the two different levels radiusing in. It's a, it's a really nice way of them meeting together. Now, this is a tip I picked up from Will Stelter when we were making that Pirate's Cutlass. So what we're now going to do is we're going to rough in the taper here that will then fit into the eye of the Warhammer. <laughs> Okay, so the sledgehammer head fits on a couple inches up here, which leaves me with another two inches or so for it to be driven on when we actually go to the install. I don't want it to come all the way up to where my collar is just yet. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to move this tool rust, tool rust, tool rest all the way down to this end, and we are going to make the tenon that is going to fit inside this. Of course, this is our little uh, pommel. So this is 41 millimeters deep and. 41 millimeters in diameter. So I'll come in here, I'll make a little bit of a pencil mark, we'll turn on the lathe, and then we'll draw that in. I'll now take my parting tool, come right in here, and we'll break this down to the diameter we need. This is exciting, so that now fits onto here. Okay, it's a quarter inch away, a little bit of hitting, and that will work just marvelously. So what's next? Well, I'm thinking that this handle is a little thick and a little bit ugly. I think that we could do something to pretty it up a little bit. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to get in there on the lathe, and I'm going to basically make it pretty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slim it down as it comes up a little closer towards the head. It's then going to swell back out as it transitions into that collar. We're going to make it beautiful. We're going to sand it. We're going to pretty it up. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> Well, it is looking beautiful. I think I might have got a little carried away here in terms of the dimensions there. But I'm not particularly worried about this, considering you would never, ever, 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 ever use a Warhammer like this, ever, to attack somebody. It would be the most tactically useless weapon ever. Seriously, like a 12 pound weight on the end of a handle? I mean, it's, it's silly, it doesn't make sense. But that's fine, of course, because this is a hell of a lot of fun making this project. So I've been very excited to give it a little bit of my own creative license there and uh, add some flair to it that it otherwise wouldn't have had. It was really, really, really fun using the lathe. I haven't turned anything on the lathe in years, and that was such a blast. Anyway, let's go back to the workshop. And we're back, and I even have my, my chair leg, I mean my, uh, my Warhammer handle here, and it's, this, is, this is actually pretty exciting. Though it looks like a chair leg, it also looks like a really, really fun little Warhammer handle. And now it is time for us to find the stain. Red mahogany stain, steel wool. And uh, now would probably also be an appropriate time for me to learn how to stain wood. I don't know how to stain wood. Now, I mean, I don't think I'd be particularly far off base in assuming that the stain needs to go on the wood. Now it's just a question of how, I guess. Doing a test piece would probably be a good idea. Oh well. Whoa! What? That is so cool! Okay, that color is unbelievable. Holy moly, that's beautiful. This color is just fabulous. That is so red. I love it. Look at that color. This is just out of this world. That is beautiful. And it just looks amazing with the scale finish on these pieces. So I'm now heating up this sag with the uh, oxypropane torch. And again, we're going to uh, quench it in tea. My favorite copper annealing solution. It's a joke. You, you don't need to put it in tea. This is from an old video that there's tea in here. Uh, and I haven't cleaned out the tea yet. So we're now working on these stags again, and the reason that I annealed it is that I want it to be extra soft because I still need to move the antlers around a little more. Now, of course, where this is going to be going on this particular tool, it needs to immediately bend right over and then come up onto the cheeks. So I'm now going to take the opportunity with a pair of scrolling tongs to bend this way, way out in front. There you 
There you go, let's see how this fits. So if this, just to simulate, is going to be going somewhat like that, I can see that I need to come down even more for that to work. This is a really aggressive change in height here, and uh, I definitely need to account for that. Okay, let's see how this fits. Okay, great, we can work with that. Now what I need to do is I need to find a way of mounting this to that, and I think that we're gonna do it with the aid of some pins in the back of here. Which means that then once it's all together, we assemble it, collar's where it needs to be, the head is where it needs to be, it's wedged in, then I can drill according holes through the collar, we can put some epoxy in there, and the pins can slip right on. Once that sets, we can then adjust the antlers to where they need to be. So now what we're gonna do is drill two holes in each head, boom, boom, eighth inch hole, then we'll be able to do an eighth inch pin, that should work lovely. Now I'm always a fan of learning new things here in the workshop, and so naturally, we're gonna try something new. Yeah, I think that was an abysmal failure. Let's not do that. Okay, so that was a disastrous failure. We're definitely not gonna be giving that a go. I'd love for somebody to give me a recommendation in the comments below as to what you would have done, um, because I'm sure there's a way of using heat to get a, to get a nice, uh, nice grip there with a little pin. What we're gonna do instead is we're now gonna run over and we are going to drill two holes, hopefully an equal distance and roughly in the right place. We don't have a good place to get a datum from, but hopefully at the right place, uh, drill two holes, put two pins in there with some epoxy. Correction, we're gonna drill two holes, we're then gonna anneal it again, and then we're gonna put two pins in there with some epoxy after polishing it. So the pins have actually ended up super gluing them. Hopefully that holds well, but the pins are super glued into the stag heads, which is great. And now it is time for us to begin in putting all of this together. So we're gonna mix up some two-part epoxy. This is gonna get epoxied on there. This is gonna get epoxied on there. We're gonna abandon the cold blue idea. I really don't think it made enough of a difference to really, really matter. And this scale finish is beautiful enough as it is. It's on there. I have just actually, off camera, I put a little oil on here. That is looking beautiful. What we're now gonna do is we're gonna cut a slot in here that's gonna accept a wedge so that as it gets driven into the handle of the sledgehammer, the war hammer even, pardon me, we'll then put a wedge in, it'll open it up, it'll lock it and keep it tight. We're gonna run to the bandsaw. Oh, we're close, quarter inch away. Oh, three sixteenths of an inch away. So close! Oh, so close! Hey Sam, come check this out. Oh my god! Ready? Okay, on my head, on my, when I nod my head, hit it. Oh, by the way Sam, cool shirt, where do you get it? AlexSteelShop.com and, and how much longer can you get these shirts for? Probably a day or two now. Two days left on the August shirts, get in on it! The more I do this, the more I am really, really worried that we snap something. I really don't want there to be a cracking noise anytime soon. Oh, are we there, are we there, are we there? So, so close. Perfect, no cracks, we made it. The handle is on, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a wedge right in there before we make ourselves that little nut that we'll also drive in there that we can screw the very top cap onto. Now with the lathe, I have a piece of 16 millimeter round mild steel in there, and what we're gonna do is out of this, we are going to make the little nut that we're gonna drive in. It will act as a wedge, but it is also gonna be the nut to which we screw the end cap for the handle into.
Okay, I think that's pretty close. Let's keep hammering. What? That's starting to look like a hammer end cap. So what I now need to do is somehow work out how to mark the holes, drill the holes, install this so that we can we can then sort out the antlers how they need to be, arrange this, and uh, have these beautiful stags on there. This is one of the coolest things I have ever made. My goodness, I cannot have I, I, <laughs> I cannot believe I have made this. This is one of the coolest things I've ever made. This feels so awesome to hold. The carnage that you could wreak with this thing. The point on the back, it's ah, it's the the stags on the front, it's unbelievable. I am beyond ecstatic. I am so thrilled with how this came out, this interpretation of Gendry's Warhammer. Thank you guys so much for watching this series. If you've watched the whole way through, thank you. Please drop a like, drop a comment. Would love to hear what you thought of this series and what you want us to make in the future. If you haven't watched the other episodes, there is a link to part four right here, a link to part one right here. Guys, remember the August t-shirts, they are coming down off the website in just a couple of days as we come to the end of August. What an incredible month it's been. I hope it's been great for you. I can't wait to make some more projects. I can't wait to bring you along with the next episode tomorrow. I hope you have a great evening. See you soon.